up in the bathtub. You know what that music means, don't you? You know this puppy means. That means we're up for another hard hitting and the last, the very last, the death of Puppy Noir. It's the death of Puppy Noir. It's not the death of Lucky. It's the death of Puppy Noir. We're going to watch it all here. Unreal and unfold. The nightmare version of the bathtub. The urban streets will never be the same. Puppy Noir. We'll be back. As soon as I speak, I stop this music. And let my poor dog get down. She's so excited. She loves. Lucky loves the bathtub. She's she thinks as soon as I start talking on the, as soon as I start talking, she comes in here. She thinks she should get in. Okay, you're gonna get down. We'll give you a treat. And because we're all dying from the coronavirus, you're gonna have that. Your treat. And I'm also gonna give you another dental treat. See if that helps. So we're gonna try to keep Lucky quiet. There you go, darling. And we're going to talk about the end of Puppy Noir. Um, it's 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 the it's the coronavirus again. It's kind of gotten into the blood system of the of the urban night. Um, basically, the reason Puppy Noir is going to end is that uh, um, they've been freezing some of my. Somewhat, someone is complaining, perfectly justifiably, that I'm using this theme song which belongs to somebody. And I shouldn't be doing that. So uh, I fired all my lawyers because they're idiots. My whole legal staff, I, I fired all of them. You're idiots. So we can't use that theme song anymore. And there's just no point in just me and Lucky sitting here looking at you. Because Puppy Noir means nothing without the dog, the Peter Gunn theme song, me, and then nothing. And then the Peter Gunn theme song. So I can't use that anymore. We're finished. So that's why we started Opposites Attract and lots of lesser vehicles to talk about nothing. Today we're going to find a kind of tie up a few loose ends with the, with the bathtub with a lot of the noir stuff we really enjoyed and we'll always be doing noir because I love I love I love hard world fiction or detective fiction and anything that doesn't have any redeeming social value if it if it has no redeeming social value we love it here at the bathtub and and if you think it has redeeming social value we're going to try to clear that up and get make sure you you don't think that much longer so today we're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to kind of cleaning some of the shelves a bit. Um, since we talked about Vax, the really good Andrew Vax. I don't know if I call him great Andrew Vax, but I think he's a very good writer, Andrew Vax. I read a few more. Um, I want to just sort of reiterate what I sort of mentioned the first time we did Vax. You want to come up here? Okay, you come up here. We're not doing anything. We're not going to do anything right today. We're just going to do whatever is comfortable for the dog because puppy was ending. I'll just say the the Vax books I read off and off, here and there, a couple of odd ones here and there. You're going to have to get down if you keep biting. And uh, they do have to be read in sequence. So I, I, I I'll stay, stay by everything I said about Vax. He, uh, he's still a really good writer. He's uh, a smart writer. And this, the idea of this kind of Burke character who's going through this super urban night of New York and making his own kind of family, this hard boiled family. He's got, he's got a junkyard dog named the Mole, and he's, and he's always picking up these kids who've been abused. The, ch the abuse, childhood abuse stuff is the disturbing part. And yet there's a kind of family atmosphere because he's, he's got a transsexual uh, friend named Michelle who's going through an operation, I think, in, in the last book I was reading. And um, in the newest one that I just finished, Blossom, which is coming in the early '90s, he meets a woman who's the head of a what is she voodoo? She's part of some voodoo network in New York. So anyway, I really I still continue to recommend these. The trick with the Vax books I found is that the individual books don't quite work as well, say as a McDonald Ross McDonald book does, um, and the um, that's because and there's a sort of a serial nature to them, and they don't read well out of sequence. I, that, that was my first disappointment. I'm, I'm enjoying them more as I read them in sequence, so I recommend them in sequence. Um, what else has happened? We talked a little about Cornell Woolrich. And I thought I would show you something that just came in today in the bath, just arrived in the bathtub today. And this is something called the American Mystery Classics by Otto Pinsler. He's one of the old, uh, well, well known uh, editors in New York who's long been publishing. Uh, a lot of, and republishing some of the old classic crime novels, and they're bringing out Waltz into Darkness, these nice, nice kind of Art Deco sort of covers. And Waltz into Darkness is one of the great Cornell Woolrich longer 
Cardinal Wilvert's novels. So it's worth looking at, um, and it's, it'll be out in the next month or two. I might try to do a piece about Wilvert if I can. But it reminded me about how much I loved, again, we go back to Ballantyne. I think I showed you these, these great old Ballantyne uniform editions. Lucky's trying to claw her way back into the, into the screen. Um, look at these beautiful old books. Um, I still think these are the best way to read Woolrich. If you can get these old Ballantyne, I think they did these in the 80s. I Married a Dead Man. Lucky, please stop scratching it up. Uh, what, what's their name? Uh, Carolyn Graff kind of did a version of them, which, which is not as good. And here's their version of Waltz in the Darkness. Again, they would do these lovely uniform editions. So they would have a different cover, but they all looked the same. Look at those beautiful books. So anyway, um, there is that terrific new version of Waltz in the Darkness, but if you can find any of these old Ballantines, coronavirus is just destroying this. Lucky, get down, please. I'm going to have to give you the coronavirus. So anyway, that's not, that's Carolyn Graff, but here's all those lovely old Ballantines. Okay, finally, because we can't go very very long when Lucky's in the room, we have to keep her out of the room because she's, this is the reason why. I picked up a few old Ross Thomases. We've talked about him. Uh, we had a, I had got a nice message from somebody who also agrees that this is the greatest thriller writer. Uh, these are some of the old Ross Thomases, and this is the series. Oh, Lucky, please. The Scratching. This was one of his last books, Twilight at Max Place. And he has these two guys, McCorkle and Padillo. And as I recall, they're old CIA operatives who start a bar in Washington, D.C. And he continued, he, he carries this series on throughout his career. And I picked up a few lovely uh, mystery, is it Mysterious Press versions. And they're all good. They're all good. These are the very earliest ones. And that's one of the last ones. And you can get them in modern editions. But you can't, uh, uh, you, uh, you're much better off with the nice paperbacks. Okay, so I, I made the mistake of bringing up the <laughs> That's too much excitement for me. So, the end of Puppy Noir, we're just going to be doing Noir without the puppy, without Peter Gunn, and lucky, you're going to go back down and kick it off. Look at the three months. Okay. See you soon. Happy bathing. See you soon. Oh, I'm trying not to stay.